In this initial video, we're going to go ahead and create a new file in SolidWorks, and we're going to customize this file and, custom, and create a custom template. Here, as it comes up in the new SolidWorks document uh, menu, you'll notice down here in the lower uh, left, there's an advanced tab. You click on the advanced tab, and as you can see, I've already got a, cu a couple of custom templates already created. I've got Plat Imperial units, and I've got custom part template. We're going to go ahead and create a new one that shows how we modify the SOLIDWORKS screen environment. So we're going to go ahead, in this case, just select on part, and we're going to hit OK. And while we're doing this, SOLIDWORKS is going out and creating a new part file. And when it comes up, there's some things you should notice. First of all, the name says part one, and then down here in the lower right, it says IPS, which stands for your unit system for inch, pound, second. Now we can modify it here, or we can come up to the options tab, as you see up here, and click on that. So we'll click on this, and it comes up in the system options. We're going to go ahead and select document properties, and then we're going to select units. Now as you notice, all our units are currently set to just two decimal places. Uh, you'll also notice in this example we're set to inch pound second. Most of the time you'll come into SOLIDWORKS and it'll be set to MMGS, millimeter, uh, gram, and second. But for our template we're creating, we're going to go ahead and create IPS, inch pound second. And we'll come over here and hit the pull down and we'll go to four decimal places on the link. And then we'll go to four decimal places on dual dimension link. And then on angle we'll leave it at two decimal places and then on link for mass properties will come down to four decimal places. Once we have that the way we want, we hit OK, and that will create our new settings as you see here. When we click on the bottom, it'll come up and be set to inch pound second. If I want to edit it from there, you can see it's already preset. We'll hit OK. Now, once we've got that, we're going to come back and we're going to customize these areas up here in what's known as the heads up display. We're going to add commands that we use commonly. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and modify the heads up display and add commands as you see up here. The way in which we do that is we come over here to our start menu and we hit the click on that and we'll come over here where it says tools and we'll drop down to where it says customize. When that comes up, you'll see a variety of different commands as you see here that would be displayed on your normal toolbar. But for our case, we're going to come over here to commands and then we're going to find the particular icon we want to place on our uh, heads up display. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is go to sketch, and I use the center line quite often, so I'll drag it over here, then I'll come back and I'll grab a uh, dynamic uh, mirror and put it there. At any time, if we accidentally place the wrong command, we just drag that command and put it back over here in this area, and it does not matter which screen you're on to do that. But in my case, I will need the dynamic mirror. Now from there, I'll move my uh, palette over here to the right and I'll come down and I'll select on views. I use a lot of these views here as you see. One particular one that I do use is the uh, zoom all the screen extents. I'll come out here to uh, that particular uh, window area and then I'll come over here to fit and then I'll start grabbing the ones as you see here that I use quite often. So I'm going to go ahead and put these all here across the top as you can see and I'll go ahead and we'll select, oop, not that one, we'll select this one. We'll put it out there. Now, coming down to standard views, I do use these very much uh, all the time. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the different uh, ones as you're seeing here as I'm customizing. Pull them off here to the side. And I definitely use all these different view angles as you're seeing uh, here. So let's go ahead and complete this. And we'll grab this one. And grab this one. And hit OK. And as you can see, now I've customized my heads up display for the commands I commonly use often. For particularly one I use a lot is normal too. And again, the different views as you see coming across here and center line and the dynamic mirror. Well, once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and save this file. And I'm going to do save as. And when it comes up, I'm going to say example. Underscore imperial. Underscore units. And then I'll come down to the save type as, and I'll come down and find the PRT 
DOT, which is the part template, and select that and save it. And one thing that's important to note is where those files are. So if you ever want to come back and delete them, if you got too many, you can go up there to Program Data, uh, to SolidWorks, and SolidWorks 2012, and Templates, and you can see the ones I've already added. I'll go ahead and save, and there it is. So now, if I close this file, which I would most likely do, I come over here and I select New File, and you'll come over here and you'll see Example Imperial Units. That's the one we just created. We'll select on it, hit OK, and now you see we've created our own custom new part file with our own custom settings and also as you look down here at inch pound seconds it saved all of our settings we previously had set now I've created a customized work environment that works to my workflow or my clients workflow or to my company's workflow